Hello and welcome to your very first introductory to assembly tutorial and what this tutorial series is going to be is instead of learning assembly just right out like Python and Visual Basic we're going to be doing a different series to introduce you to assembly because assembly is a really big um, it's a really hard uh, programming language so there actually does have to be an introductory course and without further ado there's two things one you will need two programs by default the calculator which you can which your computer will automatically have how to set up your calculator right so you should have a calculator that looks like this just go to view programmer and that's about it so you know now it's set and then notepad plus plus is like no uh, regular notepad only has some more extra features so you might want that you can get that at notepad plus plus dot com or something without further ado let's start off our first lesson about binary numbers what is a binary number a binary number is basically a sequence of ones and zeros that the computer can read but you can't or can you turns out that there actually is a meaning behind this it's not just a bunch of random numbers by the end of this tutorial you should learn how to not only convert decimal numbers which is your regular 10 to 0 or you know whatever to binary so you know whatever next tutorial will be hexadecimal which is even funner you know probably don't even understand this but anyways, let's start with binary. So, um, first thing I have to explain to you is how do you represent this number in decimal form? I mean pure decimal. You're actually representing this number t by this. And I'll explain this later, or right now. Um, Um, yeah, uh, let me explain, let me get this done real fast and then I'll explain it. Okay, um, so what, well, what did we just do here? You're actually representing this number like this. So what does that mean? That means that you're adding the sum of all of these to get this number. If you wanted to, you could basically, um, instead of doing 10 times 2 you could basically do 1 times 100 um, plus 2 times 10 um, plus 3 times 1 basically that's what it is 10 to the second power is 100 10 to the first power is 10 10 to the zero power 1. Then if you add that up, that'd be 100 um, to 20, you know, um, 3, and then you get 123. So, let me get rid of this. How would you represent a binary number? Um, let, let me just make this simple. Let's represent 1 as binary. In binary, that's pretty simple. It's just a one. Um, and let's try to represent a two. This is where it gets a little more complicated. It's going to be a one zero. Now let me explain what I'm doing right here. Just like this, there's a pattern. Um, notice one thing else. It starts from left to right, but when you're actually um, going to do the calculations, it's right to left. You know, you do. 3 times 0 plus 2 times 1 or 2 times 10 to the power of 1 times 1 I don't even know what I did there times 1 times 10 to the power of 2 with binary what you're doing is you're going um, you basically we're going to be doing this instead of 10 base it's 2 base right Okay, so let's see what we did. Basically what we're doing, right? Um, 
we have to try to find the highest thing that is divisible by the number we want to convert to decimal or binary. So we have two, right? Um, this equals two, this equals one, this equals four. Sorry, that equals two. So what is the biggest thing that can be divisible by two or that can come out of two? And that would be right here. So, when that thing is able to come out, you not only, um, per its place, a 1, we also subtract that number from the total. So that'd be 2 minus 2, and now you have a 0. And then basically you're going to work backwards, so, you know, um, not really backwards, more like forward. So let's say, we, um, sorry if I'm confusing you, let's say you had a number 7. This should clear things up. What is the biggest number that can come out of 7? And that would be a 4, right? Okay, so we're going to put a 1, right? And then our new number is 3, because we subtract 4 from 7. What's our next biggest number? That would be a 2. So if a 2 can come out, that's going to be a 1. And then we're going to have a 1 remainder. And, yeah, when 1 minus 1 equals 0. So we're going to have 1, 1. So, basically, I know it might be a little confusing. Represent 7, 1, 1, 1. That's basically it. But in standard notation, you want them in groups of 4, so that's 0, 1, 1, 1. Um, it'll make sense later. Now let's do a different number. Let's represent 5. So we can clearly see 4 comes out of 5. So we'll do a 1. And we have a 1 left. Now, can z can 2 come out of 1? No. So we're going to add a 0. Or if you want, you can add a 0. And it's still 1. And then, can 1 come out of 1? Yes. So it's going to be a 1 of 1. So then, 5 decimal number is 0, 1 of 1. Let's go up a little bit higher. Let's go 17, right? No, no, wait, let, let's go 21. That's a better number. So we have 21, right? Obviously, 4, yeah, 2, 1. We can do 4, but there's an even higher number we can do. 2, 3 equals 16. It's important you know these powers. So what's 21 minus 16? Um, well, basically, you know, 16 can go into 21, so we're going to put a 1. We get 5 left. Now, 5, you can... Actually, hold on, I'm sorry. I forgot one more. There we go. Now that's right. So, that's, what we're, that's still going to be the same. 5, 8. 8 does not go into 5, so we're going to put a 0. Remainder is still 5. Okay, 4, yes, 1. Alright, and now you have a 1 left. Can 2 go into 1? Nope. And 0? Oh, actually, the remainder is still 1. 1 goes into 1? Yeah. 1 or 1 or 1. Or 21 equals 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Um, make that another 0. And if you want, we can um, get that calculator, and this is what's going to be important. Go to binary, type in 10101, and click decimal, and boom, it equals 21. There's a real quick tutorial on binary numbers. Next, we're going to either be doing hexadecimal or negative. See you later.